Hello, in this video, we'll be looking at the basics of proof writing, and we'll be doing that with parallel lines and with angles inside of parallel lines. I've taken the liberty to go ahead and put the theorems we're going to be using for the most part on this slide. If you look at the left part right here, so I'm kind of putting a circle around, this is the actual conditional statements. If lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent, and such forth down through there. The converses are listed over here on the right. If corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So of course, if they're starting off with parallel lines, you're going to use the left side because they're saying if parallel. That's what you're starting with. However, if they start you with congruent angles, then you're going to talk about if those angles are congruent, then you're going to probably prove the lines are parallel. Some other items we can use. We've learned about vertical angles. You can use that as a reason in proofs. We've learned about linear pairs. Transitive property, which once again is if A equals B, and B equals C, then we know that A also equals C. And then definition of angle bisector. That's If it gives you an angle bisector, you can use that reason for showing that angles are congruent. So for example, if I give you that, that's an angle bisector, then I can say angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and that's by the definition of angle bisector. So let's look at a few proofs together. First, we'll start here. Whenever we do a proof, we want to start by labeling our picture and by doing a short little outline. So it says AB is parallel to CD. And then CA is parallel to DE. Well, because CD and AB are parallel, I know they're cut by this transversal CA. So therefore, angle 4 and angle 2 are going to be congruent because they're corresponding angles. Now when you look at line CA and line DE being parallel, they're cut by transversal CD. And because they're parallel, alternate exterior angles, so angle 2 will be congruent to angle 3. Well, if you look, we've just shown that 4 and 3 are congruent by our marks. Because we know that if 4 is congruent to 2, and if 2 is congruent to 3, then 4 and 3 have to be congruent by the transitive property. So through our outline, we can see how this is going to work. So let's start by writing the actual proof. We start with our givens. So AB is parallel to CD is my first given. Sorry, it's kind of messy there. And our second given is line CA. I guess some of these are rays. Are parallel to line DE. And that's just my given. So I always start by writing those. Because AB and CD are parallel, I can also say that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. And by the reason is, if parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. Because CA and DE are parallel, I know 2 and 3 are congruent. So I can write in the box, angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. And the reason would be, if parallel, then alternate exterior angles are congruent. And of course, if 2 is congruent to 4 and 2 is also congruent to 3, then we know that angle 4 is congruent to angle 3 by the transitive property. And you know you've finished a proof when the last box matches what it says to prove. And you know you're done. Now a trick on these proofs is you have to make sure you have to you have to make sure you have a reason under every single box. You have to make sure that your lines are connecting correctly as well. If I give you parallel lines, you're probably going to show me some angles are congruent. So let's try another one. Oh, and this popped up the answer. So we'll just walk through it. A is parallel to B. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 12. So we're going to go ahead and mark this proof up. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 12. A is parallel to so A and B are my parallel lines, and transversal C is cutting through those, so I know that 2 has to be congruent to 10. But I also know from my givens that 2 has to be congruent to 12. So if 2 is congruent to 10, and 2 is also congruent to 12, then I know by the transitive property that 10 and 12, angles 10 and angles 12, are congruent as well. And if you look at angles 10 and 12, those will be corresponding angles. So if corresponding angles are congruent, then you know the lines are parallel. So let's look at the proof. The line was drawn. The givens were written. A parallel to B, 
angle 2 congruent to angle 12. So from there, I can say angle 2 is congruent to angle 10 from line A and B being cut by a transversal. Because if parallel, then corresponding angles congruent. Well, because angle 2 is congruent to angle 10 and angle 2 is congruent to angle 12, I also know that angle 10 and angle 12 are congruent by the transitive property. And if angle 10 and angle 12 are congruent, then I know that C and D must be parallel because if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay, so on this next problem, I want you to pause the video and try it out. It's very similar to the proof that you just did. See if you can go through the proof yourself. Okay, welcome back. Let's go ahead and start by outlining the proof. C and D are parallel lines. That's my given. Angle 9 is congruent to angle 8. So here are my two parallel lines, and they're cut by transversal B and A. I like to start with the first angle. It's easier for me. You don't have to do it this way. But if this is my transversal, then I know that 9 has to be congruent to 11, because those are corresponding angles. So if 9 is congruent to 11, and 9 is also congruent to 8, then I know by the transitive property that 11 and 8 would have to be congruent. And if 11 and 8 are congruent, that means A has to be parallel to B, because if alternate interior angles are congruent, then the line's parallel. So there's my outline. And then this would be the actual proof. So if we walk through it, C is parallel to D, which makes 9 and 11 congruent. Because they're parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. We also know that 9 and 8 are congruent from the given. So if 9 is congruent to 11 and 9 is congruent to 8, then 11 and 8 must be congruent as well because they are with the transitive property. And of course, if angle 11 is congruent to angle 8, then we know that line A is parallel to line B because if alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Let's do one more proof. So take a second and pause the video and see if you can figure out how to do this proof. Make sure you do the outline first. All right, let's give it a try. Let's outline first. So angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. I also know angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. And, oh, you paused it. You probably couldn't do the problem. There's supposed to be another given here. It should say FJ bisects angle IFG. So if you want to take a second and pause it and try it again, that'd be fine. Okay, sorry about that mistake there. So FJ bisects angle IFG. So that means a bisector will cut the angle in half. So angle 4 and angle 5 would therefore have to be the same. So if angle 3 and 4 and 2 and 3 are the same, then that means angle 2 and 4 have to be the same by the transitive property. And if 4 and 5 are the same, and 2 and 4 are the same, and then once again by the transitive property, 2 and 5 have to be the same. And if 2 and 5 are the same, they're alternate interior angles, then EG has to be parallel to HK. So let's look at the proof now. So starting out, we know that 3 and 4 are congruent. We also know that 2 and 3 are congruent. And then the other given that somehow got chopped off was that this is a bisector. So we start by saying angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. That's a given. And angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, also a given which means that angle 4 is congruent to angle 2 by the transitive property. If FJ is the bisector of angle IFG, then angle 4 and angle 5 have to be congruent as well. Because if it's the bisector, then two congruent angles. Or you can write definition of bisector. Now, if 4 is congruent to 2 and 4 is also congruent to 5, then we know that angle 2 and angle 5 have to be congruent as well by the transitive property. And if angle 2 is congruent to angle 5, then line EG is parallel to line HK because if alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So make sure you try those proofs and see how you do with them. Thank you for watching.